Hey, what's up, you guys? It's AJ back with another video. In this video, we are going to see how to set up a character death animation. So, without further ado, let's get started. So, guys, in this video, we are not just going to set up the death animation, we are going to work on everything else that it would mess up because we want to make the player not move after his death. That's one thing. We want to make the enemy not target the dead player attack him over and over again and we want to make the health ui uh, on screen indicator not go below zero uh, because once the player is dead the health is going to be zero uh, and we don't want to make our character have health below zero or negative numbers so you know what i mean so first things uh, first we are going to go to the third person animator so guys in the third person animator i have added a death animation uh, so this is how the animation goes and i have uh, set it transition set it to transition from any state which means that if the player is airborne grounded crouching or even attacking it doesn't matter uh, if the player's health goes to zero he's gonna play this death animation and we're gonna use a trigger called death to transition from any of these states to death animation and i have also added in a transition from death to grounded so this is just how it's gonna go the character is just gonna stand right back up uh, so this is gonna be used when we uh, set up a method to resurrect the character and that's why i have already added a trigger called resurrect over here so the way i'm thinking is uh, once the character has died and after that a uh, particular amount of time has passed on, we can just slowly increase the character's health up to maybe 80% of the total health. And once it has reached that value, we can bring the character back to life. So that's uh, when we are gonna do this animation transition. And both of these transition has no exit time. So uh, if a character is like running or attacking and it, health goes to zero we want to immediately play the death animation we don't want to we don't want to waste our time uh, playing the whole attack animation uh, before going to death so that's why we don't have an exit time over here now uh, without further ado let's just go to the coding part so guys in the health script i'm just going to add a new boolean value called is dead and uh, let's set it to false as a default and i'm gonna create a method over here Public bool. Let's call it is dead, and this just returns is dead. Now we can go to uh, the take damage method and add a condition over here called if is dead return because if the character is already uh, dead then there's no point in damaging it anymore so that's that and after we take the damage let's say the character is not dead yet then we can just have a check here if health points less than or equal to zero then we say is dead equal true and we just play the death animation so I guess we are going to need to have a animator component for that. Uh, let's call it animator. And in starts, let's say animator equal to get component animator. And here we can now go ahead and say animator dot set trigger. death now guys uh, let's say when we uh, move through different characters in the character selection screen and if one of the characters dead and we want to come back to that character then we still want that character to stay dead so in that case we're just going to go to character selection script and here And in here, 
we are gonna go to the two methods next character and previous character so here once we uh, set the character to active we are gonna have a check if character list child index dot get component health dot is dead and if the character is dead we are just gonna play the death animation over again so let's say uh, get component animator dot set trigger health uh, uh, sorry that and we are gonna just do the same thing if we uh, press the next character button so let's add this line of code here as well then once the character is dead we don't want the character to still be able to attack so uh, let's go to the fighter script and here let's just say if get component health dot is dead then we are just gonna return not gonna execute any of the attack buttons or any of the any of the line of codes that we have here and uh, similarly let's go to uh, player controller and in player controller it's a bit different because we still uh, want the camera to work and the touch screen to work we just don't want we just don't want the character to jump or move around or crouch so i'm just gonna add a condition here if get component health dot is dead actually uh, not dead so if the character is not dead we can do all this all these actions now we don't want the enemy to still lock onto a target if the target is dead so we are going to go to enemy controller and in here where we have lock target target locked is equal to is in range and now we are not just going to check if the target is in range we are also going to check if target is alive or not so if nearest target dot get component health dot is dead actually we don't want that repeated so yeah either is an either the character i mean both actually we should then use an or here we should use an ampersand so yeah uh, like it's an and condition we want the character to be both in range as well as alive for to be locked on to now we want to go to characters script and in characters script we are going to have an issue here because players of zero is not going to exist when characters are dead since we are only uh, taking characters that have health factor greater than zero so once health has gone down to zero we don't have any characters at least uh, in case of the character selection scene so i'm gonna have to remove this line of code here and the players script is gonna i mean players list is gonna have all the players despite of the player being dead but uh, we can actually uh, add a condition over here and add a new target so if the character is dead we are going to call update nearest method so that's going to be enemy dot get locked Target. I think we had a method like this. Yeah, enemy dot uh, get dot uh, lock target dot get component health dot 
is dead then we are gonna find the nearest enemy and update it so when we go to update nearest enemy over here it's again uh, having a check get health factor greater than zero which we kind of don't want because we are already uh, lock we are only locking the target once the once we check that the target is not dead so uh, i'm just gonna remove this and the problem in having uh, that is let's say we let one of the characters uh, die then move to a different character then move back then we don't have any character to uh, put in this nearest target field and that's gonna throw an error because if we had a check here it is gonna allow only the characters which are alive to be put in here so it is okay to have the nearest target to be dead but just not okay to lock on to a target which is dead if you know what i mean and the next change we are going to need to make us in the health ui so let's go to uh, health ui uh, i think we had it named health ui yeah okay in here we are just uh printing out whatever health we have so uh if the character is getting damaged below zero that could happen even if the uh, even if we have a check in the health script let's say uh, the character has health 2 and uh, here it's gonna come and check if the character is dead or not since the character is not dead we are gonna execute all these lines so if the damage coming in is say 5 then the character is gonna go below 0 and here it's gonna come and make the target dead and play the dead animation but once uh, we have health points equal to minus three then the health points displayed in the health ui is also going to be minus three so we don't want that what we want to do is have the same math of dot max condition here so that we can get the maximum of health dot get health and zero then let's say we also have a check if it is greater than zero we display health dot get health else we just display characters dead so let's just go with dead and here again we gotta convert it to a string and uh, that's all i guess actually guys a small mistake over here here it shouldn't be in the character selection script uh, where we set the animation to play again once the character is dead and we switch to a new character then come back we should be uh, doing character list child index dot get component animator not get component animator as it is so let's just add this now i'm gonna switch over to unity and if we hit play let's see if we can uh, get this character killed so uh, dead is gonna appear over here now we uh, now the enemy is not attacking the player that's good and if the new character is selected let's see if the enemy chases this one so that is okay and once we switch back to the dead character again the animation is gonna play we are gonna able to use the uh, touch screen for the view but we are not gonna be able to move around the, move the character around or hit any of these buttons it's not gonna work the dead is still gonna be appearing here because this character is out of health once we switch back the new character is being targeted by the enemy so that's cool 
Maybe guys, one more thing we can do over here is once we go to enemy fighter, we can also have a check over here to see if the targeted or the nearest enemy is dead or not. And only if the character nearest nearest player is not dead, then en enemy uh, tries to attack it. So let's say target health dot. And since here the target health is of type health, we can just go ahead and say uh, target dot target health is dead then we just return without without uh, having to do any of these lines of code so so guys hope you like this video on setting up the character death animation and everything else that comes with it so if you did please give me a thumbs up and let me know your thoughts in the comments down below until next time see you bye